I'm going to go over with you some final reminders for the dinner party essay. I know I've probably said this all before, but right before you turn in the essay, it's always good to kind of go over these additional or reminders. Remember, the course module contains information, other tutorials, all of which are your responsibility. But this is just like a, just a quick reminder. As you plan your party, remember money is no object. You can have any kind of food. You can have it anywhere you want. You can assume that your invited guests will be able to arrive at the venue. If you have the venue in Iceland, we can assume that your invited guests will be able to get there. So we don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about how much anything costs. Isn't that nice for a change? And so you can have your featured guests come in any way you want, but you have to be practical. So my first thing is I'm going to fly the musicians in on a helicopter. Well, that's a great idea, except it's going to blow everything off the tables. But I can have a flyover. I mean, I can have some things that are appropriate for my topic. So I don't want to just do something gratuitously. It has to do something with my topic. And, you know, a grand entrance is something I enjoy. So let's move on. Reader doesn't particularly know who the featured guests are. So your introduction needs to be charming and informative. You don't need to go on for three pages about who the featured guest is. But you do need to give the reader enough. Just imagine, remember, be loyal to the reader. Imagine that your reader knows the cause that you're talking about. They know some basics, but you need to make sure that we clearly know who these featured guests are. Writing your outline, edit, and then re-edit. The more detailed your outline, the easier it is to write your essay. You don't have to wonder when you're in the middle of something whether you've already said that or whether it needed to be said. You've already got it in the outline. It's your best friend. Remember, let's look at that outline that I wrote for Corf and Castle, and you can always watch those tutorials, but let's look at that real quick. My example of the dinner party essay, you can have any font that you like for the title, and your title page, because this is a long formal essay, your title page is all one page, all by itself. Then we have, you can repeat the title there, and then we have that. And when I say that you are the host of the dinner party, this is me as the host of the dinner party. You know that I do not look like this picture, but I don't care. It's my persona that I'm using for this essay. I'm going to skip past here and go to where my outline is. Remember, I don't care if your outline is in a different font. I do not care. I just want to be able to follow your logic and make sure that I can see that you clearly outlined everything. And again, I, I detail my outlines. I like to put my images where they go so I make sure that I, I know where they're supposed to go in the essay. All right, back to our instructions. At your images in the essay. This is my least favorite part of the essay writing experience, but it's important because as you saw from some of the other things you've written, when you add an image, it can throw your whole format off. So I'm going to demonstrate that for you one more time right here. Word document for saving Corf and Castle before I save it to a PDF. As soon as I click on this, I can move it around, but as soon as I move it, something's going to happen. And if I want to justify my margins, otherwise, in other words, I want to make them all clear over here, I just do that around the image. If I try to do the entire essay, it's going to be madness. So this did that whole paragraph. You see that? And make sure that I underline the thesis statement. And then I can move these images around. Sometimes they want to go way down here at the bottom, and I need to make sure that I have them placed so that they're not going to cut off at the bottom. Now, this one's a problem to try to justify the margins because it's all around this image. So let me just try to do this right here and see if it goes clefluey. It doesn't. And then this, leave it alone. Okay. 
Okay. And, oops, that's not happy. There we go. But once I do that, I got to make sure that I don't have big gaps between the words. If I do, there, that worked out okay. All right. And I go through the whole essay, and I like to vary my images. So I'm in the middle, time on the side. You notice that I did the same format for all of the images. So that's done up here, and I selected the format. And if I do one, then I need to do all of them. And you'll notice the color coding. If one is in color, they all need to be in color, which made it hard when we came down here and talked about William Butler Yeats, who's long dead. And you would think we wouldn't be able to find anything other than just black and white images. And yet we found this one, if you watched those tutorials. But this is what you do. You just kind of play around with it like that. Watch out for all of your content. You're going to edit this again later anyway. Okay. And I like to include a little bit of the food. Come back to the different things. Remember, this was the image of the philosopher the architect and there are no images of this architect there was however a youtube tutorial and i watched the tutorial paused it and took a screenshot remember we're only using this in the classroom so we can do we can add images in here and not have to run any risks because we're just we're only using this in the classroom if we took it outside the classroom then we'd have to organize some things Okay, and on we went like this. You see this, what I'm doing here? Okay. And now I can try over here and just see if this will justify. Oh, that looked pretty good, didn't it? Okay. You see what I'm doing? Okay. Back over here. Around these pictures, you can't do anything. You, you don't need to worry about trying to justify the margins there. But I can do it right there, and that's too many spaces, isn't it? So we'll back up there. See what I'm doing? Okay, this is how you'll do your essay. Your work cited, as we've learned too many times, will sometimes go in here, and look what happened. It changed it to Times New Roman 11. Do you see how it did that? Just from copying and pasting it from a perfectly good download, and of course, you know me, I cite everything. So if I looked at it, it's in here. So I have to go up here and I have to just change this to 12. Then make sure that nothing went caliwampus. Okay, this is a mess. So if that happens, we just take that down to the next page so that the citation isn't broken up. Okay. Looks good. Looks good. Okay. But you see that that just happened. Without my permission, it changed it over there to 11 font. So I have to make sure when I check everything. Okay. Let's go back over to that little reminder page. Talk about this point of view situation. It is such a temptation. And how am I supposed to talk to the people that I've invited to my dinner party if I don't refer to them as you and then if I have to talk about the cause, how am I supposed to do that without saying we? And if I want them to donate, how can I do that without saying us? Okay, but the fact of the matter is, when people sit in an audience and are preached at with, you need to do this, it's up to us to, we have to, you have to, it's up to us to, we all need to, after a while, it just becomes white noise. Wah, wah, wah. So nobody's really listening. And then what happens in that is that you, the narrator, lose your voice. You are the host of this party. Your opinion is what is fueling this party. And the featured guests that you have selected are there to support you. This is your party. So you can use you one time you can use we twice and you can use the word us once in the entire essay so 
carefully decide where you want that to go. So for example, I might say, I want to welcome you to my dinner party. I'm excited that we have all come together. Now I've used two of them. So instead, instead of saying you, I might say, I want to welcome my fellow community members, my dog lovers of the community, my fellow, if you say my fellow Americans, if it's a political campaign, that's great. But if otherwise, it sounds too formal. You can find other ways to address the audience that makes them feel included and not part of this vague collective you. You see what I'm saying? Be clever. Think about this. And remember, you can use that only those times. Blog. Remember that your featured guests need to speak. You introduce them with all your charm and your delightfulness briefly, and then let them talk. And they're going to say something. You can even have somebody in the dinner party ask a question. You can ask a question. Remember, this is your party. And so you can have those people speak in the voice that they would use to speak. And you can have any kind of food you want at your dinner party. And you want to keep that in mind for your whatever your guest list is. You don't have to have cheap hot dogs. You can have fantastic hot dogs with multiple toppings. You can have, if I'm trying to support a baseball team, I might want to have baseball size, I don't know, hot dogs, foot dogs, I don't know. But you have, can do that. Just remember that you don't need to explain the food in a whole paragraph. A sentence or two and a well-placed photo works a miracle for this essay because the essay isn't about the food. It's about you getting your guests to do whatever it is that you've brought them there today to do. If you want them to donate money or time or services or whatever, that's what your party's about. The food is secondary, but it's important because it's a dinner party. Remember that your invited guests know what they're supposed to do, what you want them to do. This is not a public awareness thing. It is not a situation where you go, I just want people to be aware of what's going on. No, no, no. This is your party where you are asking the invited guests to do something. Be bold, be brave, and create fake QR codes or whatever you would like to do and make sure that they know what you want them to do. If you've included an invitation that you're sending out to your community or to your invited guests, you can do that. But make sure that the invitation makes it clear what you want them to do. We're getting together to, right, not raise awareness, but to do something. We are going to complete an action. Make sure we know that. Demonstrated. Edit that work cited after you add it to the essay. As you just saw, it's going to make it go cattywampus. I tell you, it does it to me every single time. So I need to make sure that I don't just copy and paste it and consider that done. I'm going to make sure I enable editing and be sure that it's all Times New Roman 12 font and that I don't have any big gaps between the citations. It does that to me sometimes too. It changes the format. It makes these huge gaps between things. There's two spaces between each line. No big gaps, just two. And so we have to make sure we edit that. Remember to add your outline at the bottom. I have to be able to see your logical process. It is one of our really important district requirements. And it's good for us both to be able to see how you think, how you organize. That's where your Part of your brilliance is in the way that you've outlined this and organized this so that your guests have a good time. It's a festive atmosphere. I know you say, how can it be a festive atmosphere if I'm talking about a very serious situation? Well, we do that because we think about our guests. We think about our reader. And we don't want the reader to be discouraged and say, you know, there's nothing I can do here. I might as well just go. Or, I'm so tired of hearing all this gloom and doom, I just have to get out of here. You don't want them to say that. You want them to be engaged. There needs to be 
a spirit of hope and that if we come together and people gathered here along with me, the host, and these featured guests come together, look at what can be accomplished to save this, solve this problem that the dinner party is there to work on. So the atmosphere can be festive, candles and food and charming people. And then, of course, part of the essay needs to be the seriousness of the issue. Of course it does. We're not blowing sunshine and rainbows at everybody. There does need to be a section of your party where you talk in earnest about what's going on, but it can't be the entire party because then you have a negative, gloomy tone. And as we saw from that midterm exam, if all you present to people are images of horror and horrible outcomes, people will not donate. They want to feel like they can help. They want to feel like they're part of a solution that with their time, resources, good services, they can affect a change that's positive. So while you want to organize your outline so that you address the seriousness of the issue, you want to then reinforce that these people are part of the solution. So that's it. I can't wait to read these. Your topics are fabulous. You care so much. You have such passion for your topics. So make this a lot of fun. And the better the organization, organization the better the essay.